There's one on eBay now that I'm like so tempted to buy. Well, how much is it? 4,500. But he had it for six grand a year ago. I would be afraid because they make them fake now. Well, this one's graded. Oh, then you're yeah. good. What's the grade? Uh, 85. Oh, sh yeah. so I have an 85, I thought. At one oh, point okay. I was the highest grade on file. So now- Oh God, it, it could be an 80. I'll, I'll, I'll check. If it's I'll, an 85, I, saved, I so. was offered 10 grand at one point. Wow. And I wouldn't sell it. What's up guys? Um, so this video is gonna be a fun one. Something we kind of haven't really done before. It's more of kind of like a sit down interview kind of thing. But the way it started was, I took a trip when we was going down to Joe Atlanta and we stopped at Toy Federation. I always wanted to go to Toy Federation. It's like one of the most popular vintage and modern toy stores in the country. So it was cool to go there. And I met Ryan, the owner of Toy Federation, who if you go on his YouTube channel, you see him all over the place. So go to shows, Ryan's there. And I got to talk to Ryan a little bit. And I was having such a really good conversation with him, but I also wanted to like shop around, you know, cause we were filming our video and we wanted to shop around. So I was kind of like, oh man, like, all right. But I knew like, man, I had a, a really good time talking with Ryan. He genuinely loves toys and just like the toy industry and stuff like that. So when we got to Joe Lana, I said, hey, Let's me and Ryan sit down and just shoot the breeze about toys. I was shopping, and but I was like, we were having such good conversations. I'm like, man, I want to like sit down and just talk toys with Ryan. So this video is going to be that. I get to sit down with Ryan, and it's just very candid of us sitting down talking toys. And I think it's something you guys are really going to enjoy. Exactly. I was thinking about yesterday when we when I first came in, and you were talking about like the, the legends that are selling, oh, right. and like like X Men and Spider Man. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is kind of slowed, which when I was working on Legends, like I was doing Spider-Man. Right. And it was cool because Spider-Man sold and we got, you know, yeah. we got to do really cool stuff. But I'm thinking, I think X-Men Legends are doing well because they hadn't done them for so long. Remember, they were like TRU exclusives with oh, that, right, right. you know, with Strife and stuff. And then now it's like they're full fledged into X-Men. But it's like, you well, know, the, do you the, see it like slowing? Like X-Men eventually X -Men slowing? X-Men was always strong and... Travis maybe is going to be better on this than I am, uh, but X Men always sells. Okay. Uh, but it's selling at a certain characters, not all yeah. of the yeah. X Men, but it's selling at a much faster pace. I think X Men ninety seven helps too. Yeah, the con content is huge. It's weird how things work because all of a sudden everybody started, this is not Marvel, but everybody started asking about Simpsons. Oh. And I was like, like, what's going on with Simpsons? Like who, like younger people. And they go, it's on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. And so the kids are watching it. Yeah. And now they want Simpsons figures. So it's like, these figures are, you know, Playmates, they're, I mean, they're old or yeah. like 20 years old or whatever. And it's like, there's young kids all of a sudden into Simpsons, but I guess put them in front of the TV and then they're, yeah. Binge watching yeah. and now so you get this new group of people, you know. And that Playmates line was awesome. Yeah, no, I mean but then it was weird, just like we couldn't give it away. I packed it all up and threw it to eBay. Okay. And then during COVID when we got shut down, I, you know, we couldn't open the store. I was eBay was keeping me afloat. Mm -hmm. We just threw them up all on eBay in lots, you know, like that the little environment piece. Yeah. And you pick like six figures and there's a lot and here's a lot and they're all gone and and then all of a sudden everybody's asking, it's like, well, now we need some Simpsons collections to come in. Action Force is bringing the fight to cancer. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Valiverse has enlisted the Steel Brigade to lead this fight. This new female Steel Brigade action figure, clad in pink with the iconic breast cancer ribbon adorned on her vest, is available on Valiverse.com now. Valiverse has teamed up with the Gloria Gemma Breast Cancer Resource Foundation in Rhode Island for this special item. Proceeds from the Steel Brigade action figure will be shared with the Gloria Gemma Foundation. Every Steel Brigade you purchase will help with this great cause. You too can join the action force for this fight. Go get your Steel Brigade trooper now and help bring the fight to cancer. It's time for action. But young kids, especially Spider-Man more than X-Men, it's like every kid like just either wants to be Spider-Man or plays as Spider-Man or comes in and the mom or the grandma and this little kid. And so it's like that one, I don't know if Spider-Man is the king of Marvel. I, I don't know, but it, Wolverine would be close. Yeah. Second or yeah. Uh, Deadpool, but X-Men was always good. 
and it's better now that there's that animated show that everybody's sure. pumped up about and supposedly it was really good i haven't I didn't watch it either. I watched he, maybe he, one or two episodes. And yeah, I was Matt like, tells me. He's like, it's great. You got to watch yeah, it. Yeah, no, like, I heard I heard it was good. Yeah. Uh, just good story. And it just, you know, and then people like overreacted, I think, that it was going to be too far in one direction uh-huh. or the other that, you know, everybody takes sides. Yeah. And, but it was actually, yeah. it was fine. And then they put out good product to match. So it was like, you know, it was a good win Well, just tell a good story. Sure. Sure. And you'll be fine. Don't, don't just try to insert all of this other things into it yeah just have a good story <clears throat> and yeah yeah so i don't know, I don't know. well it's like it for the animated stuff i feel like it's it's such a simple story we were talking about it at dinner last night like you know how convoluted like he-man was or exo squad and stuff it's like it just has to be simple gi joe versus cobra you know? yeah, yeah like and cobra always loses the cobra always loses you know but when you start like you Nobody know guys I, I think exo squad would be like a great adult like sci-fi like Star Trek Deep Space Nine kind of the show. The toy line's great. Yeah. I didn't it's a know, fantastic toy line. I didn't know <clears throat> until recently that uh, the husband and wife who created or wrote uh-huh. X-Men the Animated Series, they did the first 12 episodes of Exo Squad. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we had them on our podcast like years ago. Yeah. So they they're, started they're that people. and then it then they left. Okay. And then somebody finished it or took it. But the first 12 or 13 or whatever. Well, I, I reached out to the guy that owns exo squad or the the creator of it i reached out to him because i was like man there's there's still potential there but also like i always think like my action force line like it's not about just doing the low-hanging fruit like you know doing a reissue of what they did or updated version i'm like i'm like well how can that fit into the action force world you know but they need mech suits they need mech suits and that's what i was like kind of going for and he's like well we've been working on a reboot and this and that and that this was like three years ago but then I saw like uh, the Nacelle has been teasing something. I don't know if it's animation or if it's the toy line, but I'm like, I want to talk to the guy who runs the Nacelle. I'm like, so what are you guys doing? Because it's like, if they want to Did they do, buy the rights? Do you know? I don't know. I know that they like to ask. only do stuff that yeah. they own. And I've always wanted to sit down and talk with Brian because I feel like he and I could have a great conversation, but- He seems like a cool dude. Yeah. But to me, it's like, hey, if you guys want to do the real Exo Squad stuff, can I like license the name to do like the mech suit sub team of Action Force? It, you know? it would be pretty cool if you had the mech suit in that scale. <laughs> and that's that's what we're kind of working that on. That would now. be pretty cool. You know, it's like, can, can you do a mech suit at this scale for the? Because high six inches is is kind of the scale right now. But what I found is the deluxe stuff, the higher stuff, the vehicles, you got to be really good about what you're putting out because. It, it all gets pricier and it oh, all takes yeah. up space and everything costs you know, so much these days. Mezco did that mech suit that I want to pick up for our mech suit series just to see like, well, how did they do it? Now, I know their stuff is very highly priced because it's premium, but yeah. could we pull off doing a mech suit? And if we do a mech suit at six inch, what's the price point? And what's the price point that people are going to feel good about? You know, it's like people will pay $350 yeah. for a his tank, but some stuff doesn't always sell. And mech suit could be far more complicated than exactly it would exactly. be cool yeah but then yeah you price yourself out because nobody can afford this if you yeah. wanted to do it the right way yeah yeah and uh that would be yeah i i don't know like i know they bought marks i think they're buying up what they can buy up that hasbro or whoever doesn't already own yeah and when they bought marks i was talking to them and it was like they did a great garlu and I know that's a Mark's property, but you got to be of a certain age or older. You yep. know what that is. Yep. And I and I was beating, I was saying, do those Mark's play sets. Do, because I'm biased because <clears throat> I like Guns and Everone. So I was like, do the Guns and Everone play set. Kids don't have play sets. Like where you just buy this big box yep. and you get a mountain, good guys, bad guys with a little plastic mat. Just, just make it again. Yeah. And... You know, they, they, uh, you know, I think people are scared of play sets. I mean, I play sets are on the top of my list also. It's like they're important. It's like no one's really done one at six inch. So it's like, well, you know, you got the Snake Mountain, you got Castle Grayskull, and you got the, the Cat's Lair. So right, right. those have been successful, but it's like, well, what's something that doesn't have that 
that niche fan following? Like, could I pull off doing well, it's, something generic like like the Guns Never Own playset or like the Rambo playset? Remember, it was just that oh, tall tower. Force. It yeah, was yeah. great, yeah. but it's like, or could you pull off doing a cardboard playset like the Palatoy Death Star? You know, like I love cardboard, but so do I. Right, right. But it's like, what what are people looking for nowadays? You know, and what are well, people looking if for? If you would go set? to Big Lots, and I don't know, I haven't been in ages, but they would have that off brand. I don't know if it's World Peacekeepers or whatever it was. I know, yep, yeah. They had mont crazy jets. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that they were for one six or six inch, but there'd be like a, a jet, you know, three feet long, and then they'd be like a barracks and and someone six scale stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was like, you know, it'd be like twenty four ninety nine or like, you know, it was the cheapy. But sure. Some of these vehicles were like amazing. There's like a T72 or yeah. some of these. And I'm like, where do you? And they were doing it. Uh, yeah, Toys R Us had their, their generic military brand, which took up a whole aisle. I remember back, it was just, it was just Targets though, but uh, geez, no, I'm not. They were blue boxes and they'd have Civil War guys and Vietnam guys and uh, soldiers of the world maybe. Okay. Uh, and that, I mean, that was, but see, I was a 1 6 guy. Like I was strictly military. Okay. I mean, that's all I sold. Yeah. I mean, I was Forces of Valor, Ultimate Soldier. Uh, BBI. Yeah, BBI. Yeah. Uh, but BBI was weird because Dragon became the king of 12 inch. That's right. It was Ultimate yeah. Soldier and they hit everything. And then Dragon came around and their tagline was Steps Ahead. And they did the model kits. But their 12 inch was just, it made 21st century almost look like Barbie dolls. It did, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and then was Hans and then, you know, and they were doing like likenesses. So they would have Steiner with the nurse and that was from Cross of Iron mm -hmm. with James Coburn. Or, you know, you would do where Eagles Dare and it was it was really Clint Eastwood. And so they're giving you, you know who they are, but yeah. they're not calling them that. And and I was killing it with that stuff. And then so and then DID came around and DID. Which was funny is because it's Dragon and Dreams. And so I didn't, we, I didn't know if this is some like play on dragon because we're better than you. Oh, so, okay. So their helmets were die cast. Their boots oh. would be lace up. Our dragons were plastic and plastic. And then they'd give you like a wood grained car 98 or yep. a German weapon. And then it was like, so dragon's like, now you're like 21st century to them. Yeah. And so then dragon did one series where they did the wood grain gun and with the metal. And then they did the, the helmets and then. But then they just, and then they were racing each other to do the same figure. Like they, it would leak and then they would beat them to this figure. Yeah. And DIDs were in a double box at the double double gate door open. Okay. The presentation was better. And so then DID was taken over. Uh, and they would do like a screaming face. They would do instead of the static basic. And, and then Dragon, I don't even think does 12 inch anymore. Interesting. Uh, I just think they're back to the model kits, is which, but they had their own show and it was called Dragon Con, and we would go and they would bring veterans. Oh, cool! So like they did a German uh, ace who flew a Focke Wolf, or this German tank commander who was a Jag Panzer IV slash seventy in cool. the Battle of the Bulge, and then they would yeah. do a dinner and you would you'd hear their stories, and then they That's did his really figure, cool. and then his tank, and then his plane and model. Huh. It was all, but then it's like all that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know how I got sidetracked there. But. Well, I, now I'm like, now I'm going to go off on a tangent because I, I kind of see something similar with even one six now. Like Hot Toys, don't get me wrong, Hot Toys is still like on their game. They do a great product. And they did military but, before they did all those movies. Exactly. But now you see like in art coming in and like there, the stuff they do is like, I didn't think that you could top Hot Toys. And now you see this in art stuff, and it's unbelievable. It's, but now the price the price is definitely much higher. Yeah, I don't I I don't know who affords this stuff. Right? It's like I, I wanted to get the Arab one. He's four hundred dollars. I'm like four hundred bucks. I can I I have the Asmus one. And he's you know two hundred. No, there. I mean, it's just and then yeah, like it's a week's salary to some people. Sure. Sure. And there's endless releases. And then six months, a year, a year and a half, there's a better version than one you had. Exactly. And then you're like, crap, I got to get that one. And then it, you know, and then everybody's done. And see, and then this is what I see is whenever there's a, 
Transformers Masterpiece or a better legend or a newer version or a more accurate head sculpt or then they start dumping and we're the place that everybody brings it. You know, it's yeah. like when the only true comic book Dr. Doom was the Toy Biz one because Marvel or Hasbro hadn't done it mm -hmm. or the Mr. Sinister. It was, you needed that Toy Biz yep. one. So those were the yep. ones that maintained, but any of the previous releases that had already had a Hasbro release, those the, figures weren't. No one wants them. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And then, and as soon as they announce, you know, Hasbro's doing it, then everybody's bringing those figures in. And it's like, well, not, yeah. thinking they're worth money. And I was like, they're not now. Yeah, that Toy Biz stuff. Cause they, I mean, the Chase figures, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, the Toy yeah, Biz stuff. If you're a mini package guy, maybe. Yeah. You still keep The it. Toy Biz stuff was so like coveted and it held like a good value. And I was in a store the other day and I saw like this series one, like Captain America, and it was like 20 bucks. And I'm like, wow, okay. It's, you know? Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I found a case. I had a case in my basement because my basement's full of toys. <laughs> And I bet. <laughs> and I found a case. And I remember I'm texting Dra Travis because, you know, Travis knows everything about Marvel. I, you know, I know a fraction of what he knows. And I was like, and then I was saying to him, and I don't know if it was the Rider series or something. There was a couple good, or it was Giant Man or Galactus or not Galactus, Apocalypse. I don't know. The Fing Fang Foom wave was a good see, one. That, yeah, that yeah. was Hasbro, though. It was Hasbro, but it was, so from what I was told, that was Toy Biz tooling. So when they took over the license, right. Toy Biz had all this tooling that they hadn't got to yet. That's why, like, all those figures had those weird ball hips still and stuff and that like that. because was when that economy kind of came tanked. Over. Yeah. The housing market. Yeah. So that. Yeah, they so got I it think, in 2007. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's, yeah, that's when I moved. That's when I, I changed gears from the, the, because I didn't sell any. Like what you see in my store now, none of that. Like there, you don't even really see the 21st and the Forces of Valor and the diecast tanks and all that. Like yeah. I tried in the old store and nobody cared. No one, no one dug it. Yeah. So you just had to throw it on eBay. Uh, hmm. But you know, it's it's just weird how how you know. And then and then often I wonder, like the 90s, let's say 90s GI Joes. They're there's eighty dollar figures. There's sure loose. Yeah, like the, then, ni the ninety four countdown. He's like a hundred and fifty dollar figure. <laughs> but nobody cared. Like you could get that stuff carded five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, and nobody cared. Yeah, it was the early stuff. But as you, as those guys get older, yeah. that's their Joe. And then, then I often wonder, does my eighty two, eighty three, eighty four? Do I become the twelve inch guy? That exactly. I say nobody wants that. Yeah, we can't sell it. Yeah. And then everything, but then people, I get young people still buying vintage Star Wars and vintage yeah. Transformers. Yeah, so vintage. then you're like, there's still some hope that it will survive. I mean, young people collect Nintendo. You didn't grow up with Nintendo. Like, yeah, I had Nintendo. I mean, I also had an Atari, but Nintendo for me was high school. So how do these 20 somethings or getting every Nintendo game or like, you didn't grow up with that. But, yeah. But so then why don't we go back to are you trying to get every Atari 5200 game? It's interesting. Or every ColecoVision game, but maybe because there was no Mario or something maybe. to do with. Yeah. It's the Nintendo franchise with. I I I I just wonder why did did we go to Pong? Nobody cares about it. like <laughs> why why does it start with that? That's what I don't get. Yeah. Well, you say like vintage Star Wars. It's like yeah, I I see young kids buying vintage Star Wars, but it's like it it doesn't translate over to Power of the Force too. That stuff's still garbage. Like it, I love it because that I love that line. I think it's great. But so the buff Luke and the buff. Yeah, but then they 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 course corrected after that. But they, yeah, but that stuff now, like no one no one really cares. So it's like yeah, it's cheaper Star Wars now keeps going up. But yeah, it's super than cheap. Then the stickers on them. Yeah, I sell them for five dollars, which is awesome because no, everyone tries to sell them higher than I'm. Like these are five dollar figures. Well, yeah. the, the the beauty I always say is. The dad who has a kid who grew up with those has kids now. Yep. And the kid can come in the shop with the dad and the dad's like, I have those. And might not, the kid might, he might not let his kid play with them because those are mine. Yeah. And now the kid could buy them and play with what his dad played with. It doesn't and so I bank, think that's yeah. kind of cool. And you can't walk into a store and buy a $5 Star Wars guy. But you can, yeah. You can with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you could buy episode one figures. So now you're up to 99 and then you could <laughs> even go past that. They're still $5. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you're asking more, you're 
never going to sell. I see guys at shows all the time trying to get $10, $15 for figures. I, I'm like, I'll make I you like, a deal on the whole box, but you know. I like, I really like the freeze frame line. It it's was just, such a great line. I just Freeze frame start, and Power of the Jedi were two really right. good lines. Then it's a slide. Yeah. It's a projector slide. Yeah. But then it's, it's the night, like it's, it's not that old, but I guess it is because now we're in 2024. But it just seems like, and then they had a mail away macro binocular yep. set to put the slide yep. in. But I mean, you don't even, who has a slide projector? You even look at these things. You just got to hold them hold up. Hold them to up. The light. Yep. Uh, yep. But whatever gimmicky thing, I was just fascinated with like the add on, yeah. whatever the add on was. Uh, even the Comtex, I thought that was cool. I thought the Comtex were cool too because it was a figure stand. Yeah. It was like, up until that point, you know, G.I. Joe's had stands, but they didn't come with them. Right. But it was like that. This figure came with a stand. I loved it because I put it on my shelf with the and stand. And then they could communicate and it just didn't. And they tried it again. Yeah. With the Force Awakens stuff. Um, yeah. And it, it's just weird what, right? You know, I don't I don't know. It's weird how it works. Yeah. And then they did the, the they weren't 3D, but they you pulled them and it changed the image of the character. Oh, so yeah, that was. Uh, that, that was still, that was either right before ComTech or it was in between freeze frame and episode one. Flashback. I Flashback, think. yeah. yeah. See, they went green card com tech, so then you got a new hope. That's right, yeah. And then there was a Jawa, and then yeah. there was like a no foothold. Because like, that very... was Power of the Jedi, right? right? After episode one was Power of the Jedi? So yeah, episode one was going to continue into, I guess, original trilogy characters, okay. com tech, green card. But the, I think they did a, a stormtrooper who had a weapons rack. Yep, I remember that one. There was I a remember Jawa. The Jawa. And a Vader, right? There was a, they do the Vader. There was, was Luke with his T-16. Yes. There was a Han. Han, yep. From and, the Greedo and I think, fight. And then you could get, and I because I was fascinated with this. So like I would search eBay and do ComTech lots because I was just trying to get as many ComTechs <laughs> as I could. And then you'd see coming out of China, there was like the Chewbacca ComTech. I guess they got made. Oh, but they never got released. So then people were, they were you, you could get them on eBay. Oh, okay. The Chewbacca ComTech. So I was like, well, that was cool. I wonder what figure that would have been. Yeah, huh. but everything, yeah, I, I see, I was fascinated with the power of the force, the coins. And and it's, out of all the vintage, it's the most valuable. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's what I'm left with. Like, I have my entire vintage Star Wars collection is complete and I'm on the category five coins right now. So I have all I'm, the I'm coins. I'm missing 13 coins. I might need yeah. one or two coins. I have the pitch yeah. coin. I have the 63rd coin. You have coin. the pitch coin? Yeah. Oh, man. There's one on eBay now that I'm like so tempted to buy. I would be very... How much is it? 4500 But he had it for six grand a year ago. And he kept it on there. And he's like slowly lowering the price and lowering the I price. I would almost... If you were to buy it... Like I would be afraid because they make them fake now. Well, this one's graded. Oh, then you're yeah. good. What's the grade? Uh, 85. Oh, shit. Yeah. I have an 85. I thought at one oh, point okay. I was the highest grade on file. So now. Oh, God. It, it, it could be an 80. I'll, I'll, I'll check. If it's uh, an 85, I, saved, I was so. offered 10 grand at one point. Wow. And I wouldn't sell it. But, you know, wow. I was told there's less than 10. The pitch coin, you're talking about the, the Jedi Luke where he's standing with the saber? Or are you talking about the one with the hand holding the saber? That's the 63rd. That's the that 63rd, one. which, yeah, that, that didn't, that would have came with the book, right? Well, supposedly, yeah, if you bought that binder yeah. that got teased i yeah. had a chance to buy that oh really i know one just went up for auction or it's about to go up for auction i know like one got found with the coin in it i'm like man that's but awesome. and then they ran the 63rd coin again and i'm by far not an expert on this so mm -hmm. people could correct me i'm sure but they ran them again but vintage so I don't know if it was a year or two later or three years later or somebody ran the 63rd coin again. Oh, really? So then it's, so the Tom Derby guy who was Cloud City Collectibles. Yeah, he's and, AFA, yeah. Right, he's one of, I think, yep. the owners. So whenever you get a, a more prestigious item it's and you get the paperwork. Him, yeah. You, yeah. And so I have a 63rd coin also that, he goes, no, it's still good, it's valuable, but it's like the second run. How they oh, know that, I don't know. But it's still vintagely run. If really? That makes any I didn't sense. know that. Oh man. I was like, does somebody make just a generic coin holder? And I found some site that sells like holders for casino chips yeah. or something. Yeah. And they have a so they they had to have thought of this. So then it has 63 slots. Because I have the the one, the display one, where it has 63 spots and I have all the coins in it in this display. There's a master master one that has that has the Ewoks ones too, right? Or and the, then the it Jordan. has them all two of each 
Oh. So you can have front and back. Oh, interesting. In one. But then, so then I have like some variants. Like there's a Lando with the extra star. Oh, right, right. I have some of the unreleased bronze ones. There's you know, the little Luke. The I have one. the little Luke. Um, which the crazy thing is like, so the Category 5 coins, people, you'll see them come up on eBay and people want a thousand or more for the Category 5. But then it's like the Luke, the small one, they say there's only about 400 made. And it goes for like 200 bucks. Yeah. But I'm like, well, then how many of the Category 5 coins are made? Because if something that was a 400 piece run is 200 bucks, how can you justify a thousand dollars for, you know, a yak face coin or, you know, a... Uh, 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 a hero Han coin or the Bespin Lou coin. Yeah, it doesn't make. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't make because because I, yeah, I, I I don't understand it. And then if you if you were smart enough to write a letter to them, they sent you coins. Yeah, I, they I've seen would that send letter. you all of them. Oh, they would all of them. Yeah, oh, those man. exist. Where it was oh. one of each coin in in the thing. Oh man. Uh, and I think this is maybe 10, 15 years ago. That was around ten grand. Damn. Uh. I would, yeah. So, yeah, they, that's crazy. But you just, hey, what what happened to all these? You know, you teased all this or talked about yeah. this in the binder, and how do I get those other coins? Or what was the figures? Or, or I, you know, I can't. Like, I bought a collection from a guy. He had every figure but Yak Face. And then he wrote a letter to Kenner, like, I can't find this figure. Yeah. And so the letter Canada. comes back. It wasn't released in the United States. And so then I bought that letter from him because I was oh, like, I cool. want the letter. Yeah, that's cool. And so cool. my collection I had pieced together, I I had them all. But this collection came in from one owner. Uh -huh. And so then I sold all of them. Kept it all together. And I wanted his collection. Oh, okay. Got with, it. With the letter and then just got a yak face. But he couldn't get a yak face. But he had the letter to prove why, which was cool. Well, there's an on eBay right now, there's a Dick Tracy blank figure with a similar letter. Oh, wow. Someone wrote a letter saying, I can't find the blank. And Playmate sent a letter saying it was only released in Canada or something. Well, and I was like, because I had just got a blank uh, like six months ago. And but I was like, I really want that one because I want that letter. Matt, right. la Matt laughs about about paperwork. I think paperwork is awesome. Oh, I love. So the idea of like That's that letter. You know, when you see like the Kenner, like we care things, like I think that's great. Like when you can get stuff like that is cool. A box walked into my buddy's shop in Vegas. He since sold it, uh, the shop. And he knows I, and he's like, I don't want any, I don't want this. Do you want it? And so it's just a box where the guy ordered parts for the Millennium Falcon. So it's in the mailer box and it's, you know, like two training balls and seats and struts and yeah, and it's just, he ordered the parts and it's just all in the baggies in the box. The box oh, is never open. okay. So he never like took the pieces no, out. No. Like they're all so I was bag. Like, I'll buy it. Wow, what am I gonna do cool. with it? But it's just so cool. Yeah, because how many of those do they do? Like it could have been. It could be a one off because they're probably like, oh, this kid needs parts. Let's just pull something in. And throw well, keep because on the yeah. back it was like we really do care, and then yeah. you could order parts. Yeah. So it's like I lost this. You would Kenner would send. You know, it might cost you whatever, or, or it might not handling. even cost you anything. Sure. Sure. And, and so this guy wrote in for that and and then, yeah, so it's just, it's so, but you know, and I always wanted a bell display. I finally got one. Uh, but a guy walked into the Vegas shop. Well, it was again, my buddy's shop when he owned it. And he goes, a dude's walking in here. He's got one of those hangler, hanger, dangler, hanger things. And he's like, do you want it? It's like, yeah, what does he want? He goes, he wants three grand. And I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of fakes. Yeah. I'm, South Carolina, I'm not in Vegas. I can't look at it. Yeah. Like, send me pics. And I was like, how do I just cold send? Like I, right. And then I send it to somebody whose opinion I trust. They're not getting back to me right away. So I wait. And then that guy leaves and he goes, I just gave him your information. He said his dad worked for the company that made them and he's not far from you. So he'll just come by your shop. Oh, that's awesome. And he had it like in, in the <laughs> box. And... I never heard from the guy. And uh -huh. then the source comes back and goes, that's good. Uh, and he's like, if you don't want it, I'll pay 10 grand for it. Uh, it's like, well, it's, the guy's going to come, right? He never came. Oh, and he really? just wanted three grand. But I, I, I didn't trust. 
Yeah, you got to, yeah, a big purchase like that, you got to see it. Right. You like you if, know I had a guy walking getting. with a carded vinyl Cape Jawa. And, and I'm like, and it's not the best card, mm -hmm. which is help better because if it's too immaculate, then I'm right. too paranoid. Yeah. And then I'm looking and so I gotta, I gotta let some other eyes look at it because yeah. this is gonna be thousands of dollars. It's like Pawn Stars, let's call on the expert. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I, I text an important person who can look at this for me and, and they're like, nah. Really? Just buy pictures they were able to tell. And then I, and then as I'm waiting for him to analyze it, and then I was like, wait a minute, uh, this is that way, you know. First of all, I've never seen the Jawa gun taped on the right side of the bubble. Okay. Like if you're looking at the bubble, it's, yeah, it's, it's on, to his right, yeah. but it's on your left. Yeah. But it was over there, which that was odd. But then there was other things. I don't know if, but it wasn't good. So I was like, so then it helps to, because I mean, you can't know, I mean, I, I, it's not like I've handled how many carded vinyl yeah. Cape Jawas have I seen? Like, yeah. so it's not like I need an extra set of eyes. Uh, like if it's loose stuff or loose parts, typically my brain just knows by touching it. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. Like it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Because you've handled enough. Yeah. But then there's things that I, I question and I just leave them in this pile. Like I, I. I There's think, some of the fakes are really good. I think I got they're a, good, but I don't, I don't. I got a buddy who buys, he buys every fake and he catalogs them. So oh, he yeah. knows. But like when I bought my loose uh, vinyl cape Jawa, I, it went through all the tests and I had other people look at it and they're like, yeah, it's, it, it's good. But then I, I saw someone selling in a Facebook group, selling vinyl cape Jawa and my buddy was going to buy it. And then he had a bunch of people messaging him saying, that's a fake. But it passed all the the, the scratch tests. Yeah, because there's like a ripple thing if you're yeah, running a nail. It's it's a hatch mark and you can run your hand and it zips. Right. But the you know, the guy took a video of him doing it, but people were telling him that no, it's fake, and they're starting to fake those. Like and you're like, man, why can't like they're ruining the hobby in a way? Because have, you're just like, I just want like authentic stuff. I had know? a friend who knew I needed it because I didn't have one personally. Okay. And I had a Carded Night Force collection come in. Not graded, but raw, but nice. You know, not gonna be 85s or yeah. but maybe 75s, 80s. Uh, and he showed up in my store. I think it was that we had a Black Friday sale, so everything was 20% off. And he and he brought me an AFA 85 vinyl. So then I was like, I don't have to, yeah, I don't have to worry. Yeah. And then we traded a, I think I traded a like he got in, and, however he got it. Like he didn't, he wasn't hitting me for, re he's like, I need one of those night four sets or whatever. We'll just trade it out or something. Like that. It's a good trade. So yeah. I, I, he was happy. I was happy. Yeah. And he, he got, he wanted to help me get, you know, finish my collection. Yeah. Like the guy who sold me the gold head because I needed him. Like, I know you need this. Like I'm not giving it to you, but yeah. you know, give me, you know, instead of $800, $500 or whatever. So then I was like, and it was, it was minty. Do you ever tell you about my Steel Brigade collection? Uh-uh. I have the world's largest Steel Brigade collection. Oh, vintage Steel Brigade collection. Well, I've been told and no one's, <laughs> no one's refuted it yet. So it was always my favorite Joe growing up. Right. It was just cool. The idea of mailing away for this personalized Joe. Right, right. And I think in like 2000, like 13, 14, you could still get them for like 40 bucks. Right. And I was just buying them up. And then it's like, obviously I chased every version, but then I just started like, just buying them up and true building and true building, and true building. But I found it fascinating that you can, that each file card has a serial number on it. And the serial numbers coincide with an order of how they were produced. Interesting. So once I figured that out, I started buying up file cards. And I was able to know by the serial number, which version it goes with. So I have this whole Excel spreadsheet. I made a website. The website's down now, but I did this whole website Man. for people to send me their info so I can log it. So we can trace the history of the Steel Brigades and when they change from A to B to C to D. That's cool. And just by the serial numbers and when they change and stuff like that. So at this point now I have Jeez, I think around 200 steel brigades Jeez. and a hundred and something file cards and a bunch of patches and stuff. That's awesome. But it was like, but I, but I hurt the market. Cause what happened was 
you can get a, a figure anywhere between 40 and 60 bucks, depending on the version. And everyone thought the gold head was the rarest one. And I kept telling people it's not. Version A is the rarest one because there's less of them. So I was buying up A's cheap. And then people got started to get Y's. And now the A is as much as the gold head or maybe more. But, you know, I could get file cards for 30, 40 bucks. Now people could sell a file card for 100. That's nuts. And once like it got closer to COVID, I was still buying steel brigades. And then I realized that people started wanting steel brigades and then the market started going up and i'm like well i'm getting out of this now because now it's like a steel brigade will go for you know over a hundred dollars complete like with the patch oh, yeah 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 you know gold head one i, I bought a gold head one like they want like a green with, in a baggie. yeah i bought a gold head one with the file card with the patch all complete in 2019 for 600 bucks and i thought that that was a little high then now they're a green. yeah it's nuts and I'm like, wow. And I don't need it in the bag. I just want it because yeah. I want to set them all up. Yeah. Like I have like I have Rampage in a bag. Okay. I don't want them in a bag. God. Do but you have the little piece of paper that talks about who he is? Yeah, right? Yeah. Because no, he, yeah. he came with a file card, an uncut file card, and then a piece of paper. Yeah, no, from no. From General Hawk saying who Rampage is because people, they didn't want to confuse people thinking he's heavy metal. Right, right, right. Yeah. But I, 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 I mean, then there's... Over or uh, geez, I'm drawing a blank now. Is it Overlord and Dictator or no? Or what am I? He was the one that came with the vehicle, the weird Cobra guy with the monocle. Are they like a two? No, the no, 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 no. I have several tough to get guys, but they're in baggies. Okay. And then like, I want to set them all up loose yeah. when I get my display done. And but I have it, but I don't have it. But you know. Yeah. So. I can check the box, but I need to downgrade. But, you know, I, at least I have it. Yeah. Uh, so then, you know, but, and I, I, I just, I still need Mich or a Sears Missile Command box. I have mine. I bought it from the original owner. I want it. Because I, I, so I designed the reissue, the Comic-Con one. I was so psyched to do it because I thought it was such a great item. At Joe Con, I won that. Okay. And it was signed by two people. Me and Daryl. So then I have that. Yeah. I'm the owner of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, because I think we only signed like a couple it, of them. Because like, he brought it before San Diego. It was Joe Con. Yeah. That's and where, yep. I won it with the my gambling proceeds. Oh, ah, okay. And okay. I bubble wrapped it and took it home because that was the piece that, like, I always want it. And I, I don't have the original, yeah. so I'm going to have this one. And this one's more special because it's dual signed. Me and Daryl. Right. So that's I, really funny. <laughs> that's in, that's in my basement. Okay, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah. he opened one there, and I have it on my phone because I don't know if that was Chattanooga or. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Which was the last show then? Well, yeah, that was yeah that was the last re Joe Con was Chattanooga. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I was there, Daryl was there, but that was a good way to end it. Yeah. So that's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, it's in my basement. That's really cool. And see, I didn't know you were the other because I knew I knew it was Daryl. Uh huh. And then I was like. Like, I'd grade it, right? Because it's a unique one. All right, guys. So that was my sit down with Ryan. I know it, it could have been hours longer. I could have sat here and talked with him like the entire day because you go off on tangents and it was great. Like, I, I had such a blast because you talk about something and then it would get me to say, oh, we can go on to this tangent and stuff. And like, that's so much fun to do when you're talking about toys. So it was great being able to sit down with Ryan and, and have a longer conversation with him. And I hope you guys dug it as much as I did, because it kind of like gives you a look at like two fans, but he's a fan and a toy store owner. I'm a fan and a toy manufacturer and like having the two of us can sit down and like just really like get into toys uh, was was really exciting. So hopefully you guys dug this video. Maybe I could do it again with Ryan. I think maybe we should do like every time we go to a show, we like make this like a Bobby Ryan, you know, kind of series of Valiverse Toy Fed kind of thing. But uh, I had a blast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments if you guys want to hear more about it and what you guys thought of our conversation.